Welcome to Raising the Bar podcast. Sponsored by the Ashmore Law Firm. We're your hosts and siblings, Gary Ashmore and Lori Ashmore Peters. Subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. We want to welcome you to our Raising the Bar podcast with our special guest today, TK. Yes, thanks for having me. Timothy Clun. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had to get that That's in. Right. <laughs> Everyone knows him by TK. Um, and our podcast is sponsored by the Ashmore Law Firm, which mm-hmm. is Gary and I, brother, sister, not husband and wife. We okay. always have to make that clear. Yeah, right. So we were just talking with TK before we went on the air, and oh my gosh, you're a very interesting person. Yeah, I've had a... It's been a pretty interesting life, to say the least. I've been overly blessed. It's been a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I've got hopefully a lot of uh, runway left, you know, to of keep, keep having some fun. So. Absolutely. And so I guess let's let's do the present of you're getting ready for the – Is it, it's a celebrity softball tournament. Celebrity softball classic. This will be our actual 10th year. Um, our first one was in 2016, uh, Marcus Luttrell and the Lone Survivor Foundation. We, That's how it kind of came up. We were just so sick of black tie galas. And I think right. in um, 2014, I think by the time we got to Marcus's in November, my wife Jessica and I had probably been to 12 or 14 black ties. And I was like, I can't do this anymore, bro. Like, take me off the board. I love you. I'm done with this. And that's when we were kind of like, we need to do something else. Mm-hmm. And I told Marcus when we were talking, I was like, let's do a celebrity softball game. So in 2015 was the first one we did. Okay. And, um, and then it just kind of took off from there. We did one in 2016 in Colorado Springs. Then it was like, why are we doing anything outside Dallas-Fort Worth? Everybody who's coming to these games are pretty much live in Dallas-Fort Worth um, or close enough to drive, Austin, Houston, and we're flying everybody everywhere. So in 2017, Roger Clemens and I just happened to be talking on the phone, and I was asking him, like, hey, what do you think about an OU versus UT alumni <laughs> game that kicks off OUT weekend, and we'll raise some money for Marcus and Lone Survivor Foundation? He was like, little brother, put it together. So we did. And then probably a week before that first game, and we had up Frisco Rough Riders as well, but um, he called me. He says, hey, what do you think about Matthew and Toby playing? And I'm thinking athletes. You know, we've got all these right. great – I'm like, Matthew and Toby who? And, and, oh, by the way, we're like four <laughs> days to the game, right? I'm like, Matthew and Toby who? And he's like, uh, McConaughey and Toby Keith. I'm like, they can play. I need their jersey size and number right now. He's like, I already texted to you. So – um, yeah, they came and played in the first one. It was a lot of fun. Um, the second year, right after the first one, the four of us got together and we all teamed up and said, okay, what we'll do is we'll split this four ways amongst our charities. TK, you donate to Lone Survivor, whatever veteran organization you want to donate to, but that's who it was. Um, and we'll continue to do these. And so 18 and 19, we did them. And after the 18 game, though, all my other celebrities, guys and girls, started coming up going, hey, this is really fun. We won a game. So in 2019, we actually did two games. We did uh, one to help raise money for Carry the Load. Uh, mm-hmm. We did it Memorial right. Day weekend with mm-hmm. Clint Bruce and Steven. And um, great time. First co-ed game we did. We did that at Grand Prairie Air Hogs, which was a great stadium. But then 2020 came, killed all the games. Mm-hmm. Grand Prairie Air Hogs sold their stadium. Uh, Frisco Rough Riders weren't sure they could do a game in 2021 because they're still kind of – they had to follow the minor league – baseball rules even though they were here in texas so they weren't quite sure if they were going to be able to have events and then i get the phone call from uh, my friends at texas rangers and they're like why don't you have your games here at globe life let's do a two-year agreement here and i was man i don't know if i can afford you guys at globe life and we didn't really have a lot of options so we went to globe life for two years and it was phenomenal there Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of fun and kind of a really cool bucket list for a lot of celebrities and um and then we moved it back last year to frisco rough riders I love Globe Life, but we had 14,000 people there our second year. It looked like we had about four. Yeah. Right. Because it's just so ginormous. Yeah. And the other thing, I, nothing against, you know, the new baseball series, but I'm a fan at heart. So I want it to be fan friendly. And these corporate stadiums nowadays, they're not super fan friendly. You can't get the autographs on the wall like the old days, like at the old Globe Life field where the guys could come up and you could get autographs. You right. can't do that at the new stadium. So I wanted to get back to Frisco because Frisco, as a minor league ballpark, probably one of the funnest stadiums in America that I've it ever is. been to. Have right. you ever been to a I game have. there? Yeah, it's very family friendly mm-hmm. and it is so much fun. And there's so much wall space for kids to get autographs and really enjoy the Celebrity Weekend. And um, so we just moved back there, and, and and again, it's just you know 
still holds eight to 10,000 people, which we usually get eight to 10,000 people every year. Oh, nice. Game. Um, so it always makes it for a fun weekend. Last year, we raised 450000 for 15 different charities. Um, this year, I think we'll probably be closer to 800000 for about 20 charities, veteran charities. That There's a phenomenal. couple of non-veteran charities in there, too. Right. I would open it up um, to as many charities want to get involved, to be honest with you. Um, the way we do it is I'll, I'll handle the – I'll take care of the platform. But you got to go put some work in too, right. and you're right. going to use my platform to help yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to reach this threshold before you can actually get involved with us. And but you can go as raise as much you want. And right. so thanks to David Bohr from the Adaptive Training Foundation, Dave was like, "Do we just can, do we have to just raise ten, or can we raise more?" And I was like, "Nobody's asked me that. Like raise a million. You can <laughs> yeah, have all, all your money. 100 percent right. going right. back to you. You're just." piggybacking off my platform. And so they raised 50,000 last year. I think they're probably gonna be more than that this year, but um, there's one group that already told me through one of the events they held just for the Celebrity Weekend, they raised $200,000 just so they could get in. So they called me going, oh my God, you're not gonna believe it. You know, we were able to raise $200,000 because a lot of the donors and people from our event wants to come down there and enjoy your event. Right. That is so amazing. that's kind of how it works. Okay. So so you you really I mean a lot of the charities like you said were veteran group veteran mm -hmm. charities. Um, how tell us your passion for that. You started out in the Air Force. Yeah. I how, sure well, did. First why did you why did you go into the Air Force? Well my dad helped me out with that. I um, as we were talking before we got on the air, if it wasn't for uh, like I, I told you for for sports and females I'd have dropped out of school <laughs> in fifth grade um, and just went on my merry way but um, I, I had an opportunity to go I wanted to go play college football at Southeast Missouri State but because of my uh, extracurricular activities in the late <laughs> 80s mid to late 80s um, my grades just quite weren't there I would have had to go to JUCO and my dad's like you know I'm going to get you a job tomorrow uh, you know I was the oldest of uh, five kids he's like I'm going to get you a job tomorrow and um, he took me armed forces recruiters. He's like, pick one. Wow. And my dad okay. was Army. My grandfather was Army. My other grandfather was the Navy. And um, so we have a, a, a long history of military guys behind us. But, you know, um, the expectations in my family um, were, God, let's just get this kid through high school, you know, and just try to get him in the military or something if he doesn't get a scholarship. And... The scholarships would have came from an athletic standpoint, but the grades weren't there to meet the scholarships. So, but it's the best thing my dad could have ever done. Um, the Air Force was actually a phenomenal start for me from a work ethic, and um, you know, I thought I was rolling heavy like Donald Trump at like fourteen hundred dollars a month. You know, it's <laughs> right. like oh, we're rolling like I'm buying me a brand new car and all the That's everything, right. and like you know, probably spending fifteen hundred dollars a month when I was first in the military. But it was a great career. I was in the Philippines first, and. Um, you know, at 18 to 20 years old is such a cool experience um, to get away from my hometown, to get away from the States, to actually uh, learn from another culture, to actually appreciate everything you have, especially mm -hmm. when you're in the Philippines and you see how a lot of those families are living over there. And, um, and it's just unbelievable how happy they are living in a cardboard box, the gratitude that they have. Right. And you just, it was something that always stuck with me. And then uh, from there, I came back to the States and uh, to Colorado Springs, Peterson Air Force Base. And, um, Finished my career there for four and a half years, and uh, I took the early out in 95 to actually go back and play college football at Southeast Missouri State with my little brother, who was All-American by then. And um, so I took the early out with the Honorable, and um, while I was getting ready for that, an older classmate, kind of a mentor, older brother of mine said, man, Clum boy, like, you're, you're going to be like 30 when you graduate, number one. <laughs> if, number two, you're not going to get past the semester. You're going to right. go, you're going to, all you want is, again, Girls and football, you're, not, you're only going to be one semester. Like, come work for me. And I was like, man, what are you doing nowadays? He's like, I'm selling trailers. And I was like, I'm going to see my own playing football. And uh, then I saw what he was making in the 90s, going to sell manufactured homes. And I saw how amazing manufactured homes were being made compared to the ones I grew up in. And, um, yeah, I ended up, I talked to the head football coach, and he was like, Clint, I'm, a D1 football coach. I got my master's. I'm making like 75 a year. So if you can go make that without student loan debt and all the craziness, right, like yeah. go do it. And so that's what I did. I went in manufactured housing, um, a fortune 500 group, um, Oakwood homes recruited me from mm -hmm. there. And that's what brought me to Texas in, uh, 99, 2000. And 
met my wife and was in a car accident in 2000 and had to have my face replaced on my actual 30th birthday, fell asleep at the wheel. And that's, that's probably a big moment changed my life because it was like, man, life's too short to work seven days a week and I don't care how much money I'm getting paid. And right. It's a wake up a, call. Yeah, we got a couple of small kids and, um, you know, it's got to be something different. And I'll never forget my wife came home and, you know, what's her game plan? You going back from work? She's like, what's her game plan? You going back to manufacturing homes? Well, no, I'm not doing that anymore. What's your game plan? I said, I think I'm going to be a Jerry Maguire. I was watching Jerry Maguire on TV, and <laughs> she was like, oh, my God, you got brain damage. Like, you don't even have a degree. You're, you're not an attorney. Just let me let me tell you out. You're not an attorney. You don't have a degree. You don't right. even know a professional athlete. Like, what are you talking about? And I was only 30 at the time. I said, you know, I just think I'd be good at that, and it'd be fun, you know? And a, a buddy of mine from – the older days called me and, hey, are you going back to mobile homes? No, hey, we're looking for a VP in the corporate world if you want to come over here and look at that. And so I went and did that and got involved with Big Brothers and Big Sisters and actually went to go meet um, Charles Pearson, the CEO at the time from Big Brothers Big Sisters, and um, ended up meeting my first athlete in between, uh, Lemuel Stinson. And uh, while I was waiting on him to show up, met him, and uh, he was Chicago Bears, and he and I started doing stuff together, and the rest is history. Right. Wow, you know? what, so that just is amazing. Took from there, yeah. So, and then uh, I was in corporate America until 2008, and as you know, when the bottom fell out in 2008, the uh, shareholders came to me and were like, "We got to get rid of half this company." And I was like, "Great, start with me. I'm out of here because either we all stay or I'm leaving. I'm first one to go." And um, after some back and forth, because um, they're like, "Yeah, you're not leaving," I'm like, "Either I'm leaving or nobody's leaving." That's your choices. And um, by the time it was done, yeah, I left and went home, told my wife, you know, now stay home, mom. What are you doing? Home? I'm like, oh, it's interesting. I resigned today. And, <laughs> and that was really right before the big crash. Right. Right? right. So then the big crash came. Then we had our rear end handed to us for about 18 months and uh, got out of that and decided that, you know, we're going to, if I'm going to bet on anybody, I'll bet on myself. And that's kind of how everything else fell into place. So, 16 years since I've been in the corporate America and, um, you know, and then again, we started these games in 2015 was our first one. And it was just, how do we get back and have fun doing it? And again, the rest is history, right? You know, it's just, just about meeting great people like you guys and just having fun and enjoying life. And, uh, that's kind of where we've been. That is amazing. That's and great. so you've got, uh, we were talking, you have four kids. Yeah. Okay. All of Absolutely them, all amazing. of them has gone through, you know, they have that sweet mom that's like, oh, we'll pay for your college, you know. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like Dad's the old like, grandpa going, scholarship or military, you choose. Right. Get out there and, and work. Uh, so, but they've all done phenomenal, and they've all done really well. And um, so the only one left is the baby girl. So we have the uh, three boys and the baby girl. And she um, she just went in her junior year at University of Colorado. Okay. So mm -hmm. she's kind of my little hippie chick. She, uh, she's kind of like her grandmother. She's a little granola, a little hippie. So her <laughs> first semester was uh, University of Hawaii. Okay. Which I'm like, hey, okay, my, vacation my, time here. Right. Like, my daughter we're, we're says, in. what if I apply to University of Hawaii? I'm like, go for it. Yeah. I, well, it's funny. I, I'm okay you know, I've told that. my kids, like, all of them, like, if you're smart, you'll go to University of Hawaii. Your mom and dad's paying for it. Uh -huh. Like, oh, yeah. I right. would go vacation over there, too, if I was you guys. But she's the only smart one that actually took us up on it. Unfortunately, she got there right at the end of COVID, so they're still doing – the classes from the computers they weren't doing no classroom uh the stadium was only you can only get halfway you know fill the stadium mm -hmm. halfway yeah. right. and um and then after her first semester basically surfing and uh that's why i was asking her like what classes are you taking because all i see is you're <laughs> surfing all the time and you know and having fun and you know honestly probably smoking a bunch of cannabis over there and so what else is going on she's 4.0 student so i can't you know get onto her can't too complain much, right? that's correct and then after that she was like you know, what do you think about me going to the University of Colorado? And I was like, man, I, and that's one of my favorite universities growing up. That's where I actually want to go. And um, so I'm like, oh, 100%. And then we got Coach Prime there right after, which I'm like, yes. Right. Now that, we're, now we're in business here. Yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been fun. We're actually going to the CU game at the end of November. I think it's their last home game because my wife's like, oh, the Christmas tree lights up in Bell. We can go there and go hit Bell at the same time. I'm like, oh, here we go. So we're going for a family vacation now for extended football weekend. Right. So hey, we can go shopping in Bell. So I mean, okay. nothing wrong with that. Man, I guess not. The hire of, of prime time, he just, he filled the seats. Oh, he's turned that entire program around. I mean, he re literally revived that mm -hmm. entire program. Yeah. 
and the the excitement and atmosphere on campus and you know again I have a ton of celebrity friends that they don't miss the home they'll fly up just for the home games you know your Michael Irvin's your Terrell Owens right. your of course and now he's hired Warren Sapp and uh, you know it's just it's so crazy you know what he's done to that program and mm -hmm. you know even what he did as a high school football coach you know when he was here in town as a high school you know what he did for that high school program and um, you know and just elevate it and now you know I'm hearing the you know, if Mike McCarthy don't win a Super Bowl, we need Dion here. We need prime time. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm you know, that's sure right Jerry up Jerry's alley. I mean, that's they, right. you, you want the circus in town, go ahead and bring prime time because you'll have the circus 24 seven in town. So, um, but you know, coach prime is, um, you know, he's, he's dedicated. He is phenomenal. You know, a lot of people don't know this about coach prime. So when he was in high school, my little brother was the defensive coordinator for Southwest Baptist university. So he would recruit kids down here. And give okay. him scholarships. And he got a couple of Coach Prime's kids. And um, he told me that every Friday night, Friday afternoon, while Coach Prime's getting ready for a Friday night light game, he would text my little brother and be like, hey, how's my guys doing? How are they doing in school? Oh, wow. How are they doing in practice? Are they keeping up? Are right. they checked on them every week? And this is before he's getting ready for his own Friday night lights, right? And so a lot of people, and, you know, I was telling my little brother, well, you just had a couple of his players, you know, how many other coaches had his players mm -hmm. that he's texting everybody right. and following up on all his guys. And I honestly don't think he'll leave college football. He might because he's just so competitive. But I think that's his perfect wheelhouse to, to be a good mentor for young men um, and helping them get to another level. And plus, I don't know if they can pay him the money in the NFL, what he's making in college right. with no, all the commercials right. and NIL and everything else he's got going on right well, now. Well, and so. all, the, all of the press that, you know, surrounds him, good, mm -hmm. bad, whatever it is, it's nice to know, you know, people don't know that about him. Yeah. Well, that he's a true coach and mentor. It's like, uh, you know, the media has a way of portraying everybody. They, they love the villains. Yes. They do. And they don't know that he's really a hero. And um, the one thing about Coach Prime is um, what I've learned from him is – you got Deion Sanders and you got prime time, right? Right. So turn all these lights off, turn the cameras off, and let Coach Prime be sitting in here talking, mm -hmm. and he's going to be Deion. Just, you know, mm -hmm. but throw the lights on, sunglasses are coming on. Now you got Coach Prime. <laughs> That's right. Right. So I, I've learned from him in my from the first athlete I worked at and doing interviews and being out there and, and being a part of it that, and, and actually when I moved to Texas, I had an old rodeo guy start calling me TK. So that's kind of how the whole TK nickname came is when I moved down here in late 90, 99, 2000. Okay. Um, he was just like, just started calling me TK and it just kind of stuck. But uh, my wife hates TK. I was going to say, does she, she call absolutely you hates TK. Oh, yeah. Timothy, she, Tim, Timmy. People ask her, like, well, what do you, you call him TK? Absolutely not. Like, I call him Tim. Tim. Right? Okay. So she hates the prime time. And then, the, you know, she likes to, Tim, that, you know, let me get home and, Throw the old, you know, um, I don't even know what those uh, house shoes are called. The old furry, the, I don't know, she has the boots, but I've got the. Oh, the Uggs. The Uggs, thank you. <laughs> yes. So, you know, and, uh, you know, just completely different, two opposite people, right? But it's like, man, when you, you know, when you got to be out in public and doing your thing, then you got one persona mm -hmm. that right. sells. And then you got the, thank God I'm Tim Klon sitting at home persona. Right. Probably yeah. sifting through football cards or baseball cards, so. That's, that's my passion. Right. Is uh, ever okay. since I've been little, is I just like, that's what kind of like, if I need to go defrag, I'll just, I got 80,000 baseball and football and sports cards, and I'll just kind of just start going and sh grab a box and start sifting. You know, that's what I do to relax. Wow. That's, that's great. That's incredible. Yeah, that's, great. that's incredible. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. Uh, and we will be right back. All right. With TK. This show is brought to you by the Celebrity Softball Classic. Rocky? I know. CelebritySoftballClassic.org is where they can get their tickets. And we have TK right here. We're trying to keep TK in our back pocket, who runs it because, uh, you know, Rocky, we want to get in. We, yeah, security issues. Yeah, yeah. Not going to happen. Question. Not going to happen. Go to the website, CelebritySoftballClassic.org. It's at Frisco Rough Rider Stadium, which is an amazing venue, oh, by the way. probably the best minor league park in America. Yeah, I, I, I love it out the there, finest. Rocky. The place is going to be full of rock stars, and so if you want to do a sponsorship, that's still available. There's still a mm -hmm. couple of slots. Isn't that right, TK? Yeah, some suites available. A couple, uh, About three suites are available. So okay. Yeah. 
All right. Well, do it. Hey, bunch of celebrities, some uh, veterans, an amazing organization putting on a great show for everyone and Rocky and I. Yeah, we had a blast last mm-hmm. year, man. We didn't get thrown out till like four o'clock. No, yeah, I, yeah no, you're, you're right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It was uh, we we uh, we paid them Stars off. Stars at five, gates open at five. We have uh, pregame stuff going on. Um, going to be donating a house to an unsuspected veteran there. Fireworks will be going off at the end of the night. It's going to be a whole show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check them out. Brought to you by Verve. This show is brought to you by the Celebrity Softball Classic. Go check them out. We're back with... We are back to Raising the Bar podcast with TK. All right, TK, I mean, you're an incredible person. I think I said that, you know, when we first started this. Um, but just learning more about you, and you are an author. Uh, Unfortunately, of, yes. Of, <laughs> So tell us a little bit about the book. Uh, well, again, kind of like we were talking about, it wasn't a something where like, oh, I want to write a well, book. Well, hold on, it's stop. Oh, stop whining, start winning is the current. Yeah, book, start winning, stop whining, stop whining, start winning. Start yes, winning, thank but you. that's not how it started. Well, it started. Um, so, we, I started a, a performance mouthpiece company in, t- in 2010 with a, another partner of mine, and as we which got, is which is Verve, which is well, your hat. it was a, it was a different company under okay. that brand, and um, just wasn't going anywhere. We just couldn't me and him just was not i was like we need to get the price lower we need to right and he didn't want to do it so i was like buy me out i'm good just buy me out which he did and so then it was like okay now here i am square one again what am i going to do at the end of 2016 and i was doing some speaking engagements and stuff to just honestly pay my bills and i enjoyed doing that anyway with corporates and um so a friend of mine called and he was like hey i need to get you with our publisher you need to write a book because you're out speaking. You need a book. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. And no, no, you got to do it. And so long story short, we wrote it. It was a biography. And again, as we were talking, it's very therapeutic to write, to like really reflect on your entire life. I, I tell people all the time, like, take some time and just go do it because you'll right. be amazed at what you remember and how, you know, where you're at, right? And so, but then I reread it and I was like, man, this book sucks. It's my life. And I wouldn't sell this to anybody. I don't, don't get me inspired. I don't think it's overly inspiring on what I've gone through to get to where I'm at. Um, so I called them back, told them, and they were like, no, you need a book. And I was like, if you let me write something that can help young adults, you know, your middle of the road, young um, uh, corporate individuals coming into the corporate world or even managers, mid-level managers, um, if you let me write that book that can help them, then I'm in. And so they're like, okay, do it. So while I was r- working on it, you know, I was probably whining to my wife or something. <laughs> and she was like, you know what? I would love it if you would stop whining and get back to winning. That's what she said. Oh, wow. So I was that like, oh, there's the book title. That's the book title. You know, stop whining, course. start winning, right? So that's actually how it came. And then we wrote the book and then they're like, no, this book's too thin. And it's like, well, you know. I'm done. And they were like, okay, we'll, we'll publish it. And now it's been published three times by two different companies. And uh, it's just kind of funny for me to think about it. You know, I just want to call my old English teacher up and go, oh, my God, Miss Probes, check it out. You know, <laughs> That's right. I, you know, you had to float me through your class, and here That's I'm right. an author now, you know. And, I, you know, they have it in, in, in the library at my old high school. And so it's just kind of funny. But, um, you know, a lot of people had to help with that, obviously. Thank God for the editors that, you know, how to – make me look smart and make it look clean right. it all up so um but no they made it into a workbook and um it's literally that's what it is it's more of um as we we're talking as well school was so boring to me like right. because it wasn't showing me how to make money like you know that's when i got out of the military and i i, I took um a semester of school in the military 4.0 i think i had three or four classes i don't remember and my wife's like, you're smart. And I'm like, mm, you know, I had to pay for those. If I didn't get a certain grade point average, I would have had to pay for those classes. They were free if I got over it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was so right. worried I would have had right. to pay for them that, like, you had motivation. I got 4.0, right? right. Yeah. So then it was like, well, this is cutting into my softball game, so I'm done with I'm done with college. And um, But, yeah, it, it's just interesting how it goes. But, you know, when I want to teach kids or even young adults in that book, and really I've had 70-year-olds – called me and go, hey, I got your book. I really loved it. And I actually, this helped me. So it's really anybody in between. It's just kind of a reflection of some of the things I've done to get to where I'm at. And when I got out of the Air Force, Tony Robbins was just kind of kicking in. Mm-hmm. Right. And he did, he came out with this first um, cassette thing. And it was, um, I want to say Awaken the Giant is what it was. And 
So here I am starting in this manufacturing home, in this mom and pop's home, Southeast Missouri. And the VP that they had, she was a big individual on improving yourself. So she was like, hey guys, I got this new cassette thing. Um, Anthony Robbins, I don't think they were calling him Tony at the time. Right. And, said, you know, who wants to stay in after, after, you know, hour after work every day and listen? Everybody's like, all the older guys are like, I'm out of here. And I felt bad for her. So I was like, I'll stay with you, you know. I mean, I'm like not even 25 yet. So I'm like, what do I got to lose? I'll stay with you and, you know, and listen to these things. And we went through the whole cassette tape. And I remember you were taking notes and we're listening. And we're being heard back and forth talking. And um, I remember at the very end going, basically, he's just saying find somebody who's doing – what you would want to do and cheat. Is this what I'm reading? Is this what these <laughs> hope cassettes were about here? Like, is this, what it, is this what it boils down to? Right. And she was kind of like, I believe it is. And uh -huh. that's when it kicked into me like, man, that's perfect for me because, I mean, I'm still upset that the girl who sat next to me for four years in high school was a National Honor Society student and I wasn't. I didn't throw off that much. Right. You know, I'm like, hey, Kathy, Slide the paper. Yeah, what let me see. Well, we got. That's right. I didn't throw off that much, and she's National Honor Society student. I barely got. I didn't even have high enough grades to get in JUCO, basically. So, um, but yeah. So I was like, okay. So from a professional standpoint, it really hit me home to go, okay, where do I want to be? What do I want to do? Even um, after 2017, I started having everybody calling me, um, going, hey, come with us, come with us, and you know, we want to bring in our company and. Uh, my wife's like, you know, I don't know why you don't do your own brand and your own company. She's like, you did great in corporate America. Um, you know, you're always the minority partner, never the majority. So you don't have the control at the end of the day. And I was like, man, I've got this celebrity game come up with Clemens. I don't even have time to think about this. And then I was thinking about it for like probably 45 days mm -hmm. after that. And so as soon as the game was over, that's when I was like, you know what? Let me surround myself with the smartest people I can find. And I'm going to build this brand. Mm -hmm. And kind of what we were talking about with Verve, the, the word Verve, Verve, Verve Systems LLC is our actual um, overview on our company. But um, I remember when we were going into the mouthpieces, I was going to be like beast mode or something, mouthpieces. And my business partner is one of the top branding guys in the, in the country. Um, Raj was like, mm, let me work on the corporate brand side. And he came back and said, hey, we're going to be Verve Systems. And what, what is a Verve? Right. And then if you look up the word, it's, it's basically, I guess it's an adjective full of great adjectives like enthusiasm, ability, all the good adjectives are in the word verb, mm -hmm. right? So then I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then it just grew from there with all the product lines that we've done. And then I actually bought my old company back, um, the old performance mouthpiece company. I actually have that back underneath our flag now. So we bought it back in 21 and do all the custom side, but we have a retail mouthpiece that's coming out as well. But yeah, it's been a fun, fun ride. So you know, I'm the re I'm the I'm unfortunately the face, the relationship guy, and then all the smart people are in the back. Right, of course. I like to just be those guys that don't really like to be out front, don't like to have to do a lot of communicating with everybody. But it's you just, do it so well. TK's just like you do. You, you do it you, well. You know, they do the great. They do the hard work. They do all the homework. <laughs> right. right. TK's like, hey, we got an assignment. Here y'all go. <laughs> right. Tell me what we're doing and how we're going to do this. Right. And that's kind of so. It's a perfect. So like my first partner, we were both the same side of the brain. And man, me and him would pull each other in the bottom of the punch bowl yeah. faster than anybody. Yeah. Right. I never had the other side, the conscious side. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going, hey, we're doing this, and I got my partner Rod's going, ah, but let's think through this. So it's been such a great relationship with me and him mm -hmm. that it's been able to continue to grow and develop, and it's been awesome. Hey, that's okay, why so we work. Is that why we work? Are it you the does. left side or right side? Well, I'm the one that says, hey, this is what we're doing, and you're like, like well, yeah, hold on a minute. Right, wait think a minute. about it. That's right. us. That's why you're so good, yes. <laughs> Okay, so back to your book for a minute. So if anybody wants to get a copy of this book, where do they, they go? They can just where go to Amazon.com and type in um, Stop Whining, Start Winning uh, okay. by Tim Klein. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. All right, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it as soon as we, uh, okay, as soon yeah. as we finish yeah, no, here. I'm going to like, order it. I like the fact that it's a workbook, right? <laughs> know, There's something right? we can read and then work on it. Well, and it's and it's thin. It's thin, yeah. Super thin. I mean, no, that, all um, about, you right. sold us on that one. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm not a big, like, if I look at something that's like this, it's like, I'm good. Okay, so so back to the celebrity softball mm -hmm. game that's coming up. I yep. guess it's October fifth. October fifth. Okay. Frisco Rough Riders. Um, and if anybody wants to donate or be a sponsor or whatever, where do they go and how they do they do that? They can go to uh, celebritysoftballclassic.org. Okay. And everything's on there. You can buy tickets from there. You can donate through there. You can do everything. All the rosters are up, and 
we got, I mean, the rosters are so, we've probably got 75, 80 people per team. Okay. I mean, it's ridiculous at this point. Um, probably out of that 75, 80 people per team, probably 90% don't even want to play. Okay. They just want to show up, have fun, mm -hmm. hang out. Um, but you got everybody from Terrell Owens who does, who is playing. Um, Jim McMahon, who obviously is not playing. Right. Um, okay. You know, Tony Casillas and I, I saw Tony again the other night and I'm like, by the way, like, do you want to play? Like, absolutely not. I want to coach a base with the cocktail. My hand. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like absolutely Tony. Perfect. That's, That's right. It's absolutely That's right. perfect. We can do that. So, um, so Tony's doing that. And, um, and then you got people like, uh, Dan Pastorini who his rookie year, I think was 71, 72 in the NFL. And, um, just a legend with the Houston Oilers, of who's course. like a big brother of mine. These are Alive, great you know. old names. Oh, I mean, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm a fan. I used to I'm a idol fanboy, them. right? Well, Jim right. McMahon is the reason why I wear number nine. Actually, okay, okay. Um, because of him, and, and my wife's like, I can't. And we met. I've met Jim McMahon on several occasions, but my wife, we she met him one time, I think at Super Bowl in Jacksonville. Um, and it was just brief, but she was like, I can't wait to have a talk with Jim McMahon because of him. I got to deal with you. Because, you know, he was the anti-authoritarian, you know, punky QB. And oh, yeah, that was of right course. when I was 14, was. 15 years old. And he was. That's right. And I was a huge Bear fan. I grew up in southeast Missouri. So we either got the Bears on TV or we got the Cowboys. And those were obviously my two favorite teams. So the Cowboys of the 70s, by far my favorite team. The of Bears of the 80s were yep. my favorite team. That's it. And um, so for me to have a relationship with, with with Mad Mac and um, you know he's coming to play in the game and so my wife is just like I can't wait to speak with Jim McMahon and I was like he probably won't remember much of it but feel free to fire off all you want she's like oh <laughs> <That's right. laughs> just wait you know yeah she's like oh I can't wait to talk I was like yeah well luckily he's not that old punky QB anymore but right yeah but I mean so him and and then and for Saturday we only got really OU games so okay. I had Bosworth Yep. Uh, so of course. I had the oh my gosh. Right. Yep. So when you got your two favorite people are the Boz and, and Jim McMahon growing up, and they're both anti-authoritary, cut our hair crazy. Correct. Be that kid. I mean, I was the epitome of both those guys. And okay. let me just play sports and just have fun and not really care too much about anything else. And unfortunately, that's where I was in high school and probably not much different in life, honestly. My wife, um, I tell everybody, if I'd listened to my wife 10 years earlier, I'd probably already be retired and disappeared off this planet in a good way right. mm -hmm. um, because you know I was just hard-headed like oh I'm doing this I'm doing that and finally now everybody I meet everything we do usually has to go through her first yeah because um, she's the, she's the real brains in the family so um, yeah it's just kind of interesting how it's been but you got Jimmy Mack you've got we have a bunch of people from the chosen some friends of mine from the chosen Jordan Ross who plays uh, little James um, you know it's crazy I didn't realize his dad Jimmy Ross is he mayor of Arlington and okay. Jimmy has played in our games and he's a great friend of mine. I had no idea Jordan Ross was his son. So when I got a phone call from him, can I play? I'm like, of oh, course, you know, you're going to chosen. And I hadn't seen it yet at that point, but I knew it was a big series. And, um, so then it was funny, not too, too long later, he was like, yeah, my dad told me to tell you hi. And I'm like, well, who, I'm with my dad. I'm, Who's your dad? Jim Ross. I'm like, what? So it was kind of funny. And then, Here's what happens. A lot of these celebrities, Eric Nelson from 1883, who's, you know, he's won three Emmys, unbelievable actor. Yep. So they come and play and they put on their social media. And then what happens, all the other celebrities that have acted with them or know mm -hmm. them or, so they're going, oh my God, how'd you get in that game? How'd you do that? Right. right? It's a lot, we it's like a lot of fun. So, yeah. Correct. So now they're going, well, you know, get, get a hold of TK and, you know, um, so that's kind of how it just continues to go and wow. grow in, in the relationships that, you know, luckily for me, I get to meet everybody and get to know everybody. And when they come and we have a great weekend. And as you know, it's a this has really turned into a family reunion weekend mm -hmm. is what it is. Okay. I mean, you, you can't get rid of these people now. Like it's it's something now that I told my wife, I think I'm going to this is going to be it. Number 10, because people don't realize the the man hours and just everything that goes into this thing every right. single year. And. I tell people it's literally like having a baby. You know, at the beginning of nine months, you find out you're pregnant. That's usually about the time I've got my date mm -hmm. in play. And then, you know, the first 90 days, it's glorious, and you're talking to people, and everybody's getting excited. And then you go through your next 90 days, you're kind of like, oh, man, you know, okay. Got to deal with all this craziness here. And the last 90 days, you're going, you know, from my wife's standpoint, when she was like, I can't wait for this baby to get out of here. And that's kind of how it is the last 90 days where you're just like, oh, my God, I can't wait till this thing's over. I'm never doing another one. I'm done right. with this. 
And then you got your last month, and then you got your last week. And the last week, I, you know, it's kind of like the baby's being pushed out. And then it shows up and it's glorious. And that's usually about Thursday of the week. The baby's here. Now everybody's flying in. Now you're excited. Now you're seeing everybody, and it's just right. glorious. And then as soon as the game's over, you're like, yes, we'll do another one maybe. And then by the time <laughs> we start looking at schedule, we're like, I don't know if I'm going to do this. It's that's like right. this every year. But my wife was like, I don't. I don't know how you could be so selfish not to do these anymore. Uh, well, people, they're not going to let you not do no, that. Yeah, correct. that's why she's like, people I don't know like how that. selfish. Now, I will tell you one thing that really does the why behind this, and one of the big whys for me was just selfish reasons. It's a great way for me to see everybody per year. I yeah. mean, I've got uh, the guy who actually taught me really how to play softball when I was 18 in the Philippines, my roommate in the Philippines, George Tennyson, who was like, you're a good baseball player but you don't understand softball and i'm like dude it's softball right <laughs> right and then i didn't make the base team the first time around and then he was like are you ready to listen sure and so he comes to these games right so and plays in them because he played on the all air force team and then i've got people who i was stationed with the philippines people i stationed with colorado springs i've got high school friends from elementary all the way through that come to these weekends because um, i always want to share back you know i want people for my hometown to be able to come experience what I get to experience and right. have fun. And so a lot of them come and enjoy the weekend. And, it, you know, you got the Gronkowski brothers, and it's just all over the place. Um, it, it really is a gumbo pot of everybody that comes to this and enjoys the whole weekend. And um, But one thing in particular, and we have veterans on all these teams too, right? So, I mean, probably right. half the team's veterans, a amputees, wounded warriors, Guys and girls been blown up. Guys and girls uh, who have done great things post military career, whether country music singers or authors or speakers mm -hmm. or motivational speakers, and again, it's all over the place. I mean, we had Ray Cashcare, who is part of the uh, SEAL Team Six, who was part of the Bin Laden raid. You uh -huh. know, when they took him out. Um, you know, playing these games, we got Medal of Honor recipient uh, Florent Groberg playing this year, who's you know, Big Flo lives in um, Frisco now, which is great having him local and. So Big Flo's playing in it. And then we got Vincent Vargas, who's been on all the Mayan series, who's ex-Army, um, playing in it. So it's just a lot of fun of all these guys. But in 2021, a friend of mine asked if this veteran could play. And I was like, yeah, yeah he can play. And I was texting him, and he was just very unresponsive. It was always yes, no. And some military guys, and he was a Marine, so a lot of those guys are, I don't really know you, so I'm just going to give you the quick on the answer. Mm -hmm. I don't want right. to really talk to you. So sometimes you get that. Well, at our Friday night party, there's a guy standing on the wall, beer in hand, hand in pocket, just watching. And, you know, it's un it, it, it sticks out when you're at that because nobody's just not talking. And right. Not, you know, so it kind of stuck out to me. And I finally went over there and introduced myself and found out it was him and, you know, and asked him, you know, well, are you a sports fan? Of course. And I said, well, you know, anybody want to well, see Michael Irvin over there? And I'm like, well, let's go talk. I don't want to bother him. I'm like, no, he wants you to bother him. He's excited to see you as a military mm -hmm. hero, as you're yeah, excited to see him. He, that's why he's here. He wants to meet you. And there's a DOC from NWA and all these guys and girls. So we're, I'm taking him around. Now I get him with some, a bunch of Marines that are now circled up. And, you know, being Air Force, I don't talk Marine language. You know, it's a completely different animal of language. Uh, the Marine Corps, you know, everything. that they're, they're just entire communications, obviously, a little different than the Air Force. So I throw him in the pit with, the, with, with his buddies. And they're having a great time. And then I just kind of kept seeing him throughout the weekend, and he was having a great time. Didn't think twice about it. Well, that following Tuesday, he sent me a text, which was almost a, a book. But the short of it was that I've been dealing with a lot of things. You know, I appreciate this girl inviting me. Um, I literally already had a letter. I was going to take my life before I was even wow. going to leave. But decided to go out one, one last bang with your weekend. I already had the letter written, had the gun waiting on the letter. I was literally going to come home, drop my bag, and take my oh life. Oh, my gosh. And because of your weekend, I came home, I sit down, I read the letter. And I think, how crazy was I to think that that's what I needed to do? Right. He's like, I literally tore the letter up, put it in the trash, unloaded my gun, put it away, and, you know, pulled up my britches and got back to work in life. And now he's been married, got a baby. Um, still it's comes amazing. every, still comes wow. every year. Right. Oh my gosh. Right. And so that's what really got me to go. This is making a difference. And I was that's talking right. to another good friend of mine, major Scott Husing, who wrote the book Echo and Ramadi. So he was in charge of going door to door with the Marine Corps, um, in Ramadi. And 
he was like, TK, you know, how many individuals don't tell you that are in the same boat that come and enjoy the right. weekend but just don't tell it, right. don't tell you, don't tell us? So that's another reason why it's just like you just never know what people are going through sometimes. And it's just like um, I think a lot of people in life take life way too serious mm -hmm. um, yeah. to a certain extent and worry about so many things they probably shouldn't even waste their energy on worrying about. Right. I'm a big energy frequency type person and vibration type person. So if I go to somewhere and it's just not fun, I won't be there very long. Right. Like I'm out of here. Like this place is dreadful. Um, or if I'm around somebody whose energy is low or, you know, somebody who complains a lot, I'm out of here. It's not right. worth it. Like, I love you, but I can't, I'm not going to let you drag me down, right? Mm -hmm. So, but that's just kind of how I've been in my whole life. It's just like, man, you know, let's just have fun. Let's enjoy life. You don't know when it's going to be your last day anyway. That's right. So if I'm going out, I'm going out on TK schedule and do what I want to do. And I'm going to enjoy my life on how I want to enjoy it. And I don't really care about playing by society's rules to be, for the most part, to be honest with you. I just, I feel like be good to everybody, treat everybody great and just have fun. But I don't, I'm right. completely outside your norm of what most people are in life, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, it's refreshing. It is refreshing. It's refreshing I mean, you're, he and I are always talking about it. Life is right. way too short and, you know, attorney, you know, attorneys are boring. So think outside the box. Right. Yeah. That's right. And just have fun. Come hang out with me for a little while. You'll turn this place upside. Your dad would be going, what is going on with oh, my no, kids? Oh, no, he'd love it. Yeah, he, he would. would. love oh, good. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He always taught us, life is too short. If you can't wake up every day enjoying what you're about to do, then yeah. find do, something else. Go do something else. A hundred percent. That's exactly and, right. Um, so you're making a difference in people's lives. I hope you, so. You can't go anywhere because mm -mm. you're darn good at it. So, no. so. It's, it's amazing we having know, people like you in this world. We just Thank know you. how to throw a good party. That's right. So okay, that's I it. I remember when we did our first Super Bowl <laughs> party, I told my wife, I said, We're gonna, I'm going to do a Super Bowl party at Jacksonville. And we, we went to the one in Houston the year before, and we were invited to a lot of them. And, I, and I'm just kind of like, I'm going to do my own. And she was like, you're, you're nuts. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. That's what you married. And but uh, we're doing it. And we did it. We ended up having, we got voted the number one uh, Super Bowl party by the Detroit Free Press that year in Jacksonville because we opened it up to wow. the public. We probably had 3,000 people there, but we had, nobody had done Super Bowl parties on Thursday yet. And oh, everybody okay. was telling me at that time, like, I'm not going to get anybody here. And I'm thinking, everybody's already in town and there's not anything going on. Mm -hmm. So my mindset is, we're going to get everybody here. And right. so we did. And I mean, if there was a celebrity in Jacksonville, they were at our party. I'm not kidding. Like, from, when Ben Affleck and J-Lo were first dating, uh -huh. right? right? They were there. I mean, you had The Rock, you had Jeff Gordon. You, and then, so at the same time, while all these people are coming through, that was another time where I was building all my relationships early mm -hmm. on because I'm meeting all these people and we're exchanging phone numbers and staying in contact from there. And um, But, you know, I tell my wife, like, man, I got through high school. You know, my family didn't have any money. So the only way you're going to have money is you either belt hay through watermelons or you mm -hmm. threw parties mm -hmm. and right. you just collected at the door and everybody pitch in for the keg and we all get our money back. And then, you know, that's where I was like, Oh, I love capitalism. I uh -huh. can appreciate that's exactly it. Right. And that's right. basically how I lived for, you know, through my high school years is keg parties. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have to really work, but I did have to throw up every now and then go do melons or hay just so my dad wouldn't get too overly suspicious on where the cash was coming from. <laughs> That's um, right. Um, you know, which is also, you know, part of our all season workout for sports too. But yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, again, everybody, um, you know, life just puts you sometimes in a box. I think of this is how things got to be and this is how you got to live and this is where you got to be. And I'm just complete yeah. opposite of that That's personally. Right. Oh, yeah. But they don't know um, to read a room. They don't know. They don't know. They don't get away from it. Their social skills. Everybody's heads are down. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And most people want to communicate via text yep. or, right. you know, won't even get on a call, and mm -hmm. which drives me crazy, too, because I'm like, man, let's just jump on a call because yeah. I can get a phone call knocked out in three or four minutes. We're 30 minutes into a text yes. conversation. Yep. I could have had done in five minutes. Drives I don't have time. Nuts. I don't have time texting. That, right. That's, you know, and that's, that's usually exactly it takes that do. message before somebody's finally like, okay, call yeah. me. Pick that's up right. the phone. G Gary doesn't respond to texts. I don't. You I refuse to. You can text him yeah. all you want. I refuse to. Pick yeah. up the phone and call me. Just call me. I'll yes. answer it. Yes. Correct. I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. And then there's some people go ahead and text me. 
I'd rather not get on a phone call with well, you. That, that's true. No, no, <laughs> you're right. You I, can choose those people. I, I, I need the 19 hours back in my day, uh, <laughs> you know, just shooting the breeze. But, um, yeah, so well, there's some exactly people that, right. you know, the phone will ring, and I look at them. I always like, God, don't answer it. And I'm like, <laughs> I've got to answer it. So, uh, Mark Furcarell, you know who I'm talking about. Right, so, okay. Boston bombing survivor Mark Furcarell, who also comes and plays in all the games. He's been in almost okay. every one, I think. And uh, he was um, – the second bomb that went off was like literally right on his leg. Oh, wow. And uh, because it was so close to his leg that he took the blunt of it that it didn't explode out like it should have. Oh, wow. my and, gosh. Uh, but he's such an inspiration. And, um, you know, and he and I are, you know, two peas of the same pod. So if me and him do get on a phone call together, we will literally spend an hour on nothing. Okay, and, right. you know, that's why right. my wife knows if we're together, like, don't do it. Because <laughs> I know how you two guys are going to be, right? So, okay. Uh, but, I mean, from him to, like I said, uh, Evan Vasarius, who plays Tuck in the show Ozark, um, who um, I, I wouldn't say he has a disability, but probably a little bit of autism, but, um, you know, comes to every game. And now we're letting it, now they're actually batting. So there are a few kids. There's a young man named Trey Brandt that uh, is super smart um, with Downs, but super smart. I mean, all these kids that a lot of people look at and they're like, oh, they have disabilities. I can't see the disabilities in some no. of these kids. I really That's can't. Right. And, um, and then I do a lot with Miracle League of Parker County in, in um, West Fort Worth. And, um, you know, I've done it for nine years, and we have two seasons. We have a spring and fall, and it's just a special needs baseball is mm-hmm. what it is. Uh-huh. And it's amazing to me, like some of the parents will, you know, I've gotten to know all these kids and these parents over the years, and, well, he's dealing with this and that. And I'm looking at the little kid going, I don't see it like I can't I know you can't understand what he's saying I can completely understand him it's mm-hmm. weird mm-hmm. right with some of these kids how it works and so we have a few of them that play and um and so if you don't mind I'll tell you real quick kind of how the game's gonna go yeah no okay. go ahead so um we'll do a quick check presentation with all, all 20 literally we're gonna line them up and they're gonna shotgun them around tell them how much they brought in and you know that type of deal but one of my favorite things about this game is that we have World War II veteran who's 99 years old, Don Graves. He survived wow. Iwo Jima. So he literally wow. saw the flag go up twice. Yeah, nice. Um, he sings our national anthem okay. every year. And, you know, gosh, I mean, probably when he's 91, 92, I thought, how many more years are we going to have Don Graves around? So I got him in a studio to do the national anthem because it was like no matter if, if he's here or not here, He's going to be our national anthem guy. Because that's right. the probably right. number one thing I get from everybody. Who's his, singing national anthem? I sing national Nope, Don Graves singing His national. voice, correct. Yeah, whether he's in person or he's on the Jumbotron, he's singing it. But he'll be in person this year, which is always a, 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 such a pleasure. And we'll have some of his World War II buddies, um, beer-drinking buddies, that will be with him at home plate, um, which I'm looking forward to. And um, I don't really get starstruck. Those guys give me starstruck. I yeah. love hearing their stories. Right. and. You know, you think about growing up in the Great Depression and then World War II and then everything they've dealt with. What they had to overcome. What they've seen for, the, you know, 99 years, right? I mean, it's just crazy when you think about it. And he's just still full of pep. And uh, I always tell my wife, like, when, if you pass before me, don't worry. No, I'm going to go out like Don Graves. I'm going to be chasing all these young, beautiful women. I always have these young, beautiful women around me helping me and drinking beer. So, there you go. Just so you know. So then we have uh, Vietnam veterans that will be throwing out the first pitch. Okay. Um, we'll have a home run derby. Um, we'll have the game. The starting lineup will – all the starting lineup. so and then we do a couple designated here, so it will be like 12 people per starting lineup. All 12 will bat the first inning. Mm-hmm. Um, so each team, all 12 will bat. And then um, starting the second inning, it will go to three outs or five runs. And then the we're going to do a nine-inning game like baseball, but okay. softball. But the eighth and ninth inning will be the veterans. Oh, Only wow. the veterans. Oh, are going to, nice. They're going to bring in. And then we have a little rock and jock in there, too. So, like, when the, whoever wins a home run derby, you get five runs added to your score to begin the game, and you get to be the home team. So it's a double whammy, whammy win for you. And then for the veterans, when they're playing, anybody who actually hits it out of the field is five runs. Okay. So we're going to kind of add a little bonus on there. Uh-huh. That, you know. And then we also, um, this year again, we have a red card that the, the coach, which Pat Serrini is one coach, and um, – Michael Kislak from the Cowboys, he's the other coach. Mike Renfro, who played with Pastor Rennie, was going to be the other coach, but he got okay. he got booked a gig and won't be in town. So Kislak, who played for the Cowboys, um, he's one of the other coaches. But let's say we're in the fifth inning, sixth inning, bases are loaded, two outs. Like, I can pull my red card, and I can enter anybody into the game I want to at that point. So maybe it's going to be somebody who can hit a home run. Right, of right? course. 
And uh, so you get that one challenge that you can do to stop everything to go, we, we're, we're substituting somebody here. And then, again, at the end of the game, because um, we don't do the chicken wire fence. So you either hit it out of the baseball stadium or you don't hit right. it out. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. And during the home run derby, like as you guys know in Frisco, they have this – the stadium first was on a, in a field, and then they built up around the stadium. Mm -hmm. Right. These guys will literally be ringing people's doorbells. They hit the ball out of the stadium. Wow. It is nuts watching balls fly out of the stadium, people's cars parked outside. I mean, I don't know how many dents we left last year, uh, a lot. And um, – but I guess they're used to it. I mean, no complaints. But um, it's just crazy to see a softball go that far. Mm -hmm. And um, and then at the end of the game, we have fireworks. And then Mary Milburn, who's an international recording artist, she will be singing God Bless America as the fireworks are going off and everything. So it'll be a full afternoon of production and fun. And tickets are only 10 bucks. That is great. First come, okay. first serve, 10 right. bucks. So. Well, right. we, I mean, we can't wait. No, we, yeah, we're we definitely going to be a part of it. It's yes. going to be Looking an absolute forward to blast. it. We're excited. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much oh, for being on our show. Me. This was amazing. It Absolutely has been. Thank amazing. You guys. Did you ask him? Sorry, we're going to cut him talking out, obviously. But um, one or two sentence advice for raising the bar. Oh, right, so how to raise okay. the bar. So Here, please, okay. Go ahead. Ask that. And then also, I know you guys have funny softball stories. So <laughs> you got to share. All right. All right. So I guess we'll, we'll yeah, start. I mean, with we you. have lost a leg on the field before. Somebody oh. will that. <laughs> Ow. Oh legs my will God. fall off. Oh you know, we have a few of those. Yeah. Oh, because right, no, so they were prosthetic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, they had we, prosthetic legs on. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, what are you thinking? That. What are you thinking? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was clarifying for the, mm -hmm. for the listeners. I don't yeah. know. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. A little so, traumatizing to the crowd at first, and then right. they realize so. the so leg falls off. Hold <laughs> on, that's right. It's just straight tilt to the ground, right? And you know, oh and so the crowd's a little shocked at the beginning, but no, they are. So we uh, we did we not you know Gary and I played softball for, I mean I think I was with y'all for over ten years. Oh we yeah, a little city league, but y'all started it in college. For 15, 20 years yeah. we did. We were, we were yeah. called the Misfits, which oh, I love was it. a perfect yeah. yeah. I mean we were called the Misfits, sponsored by the firm, and yeah. and it was co-ed, yeah. of course. You mm -hmm. had to switch the balls. Do is y'all yours no. is co-ed or no? Yeah, it's co-ed. But, no but do you switch the balls? balls? Mm -hmm. You okay. don't. Okay. And right. we don't move the bases. They're ninety. We don't change the stadium. Okay. okay. Right. So it's the ninety feet. It's a, again a little bit out of your ordinary. For what right. you get. A actually. The Rangers, a lot of the people that helped me with my game at the Texas Rangers, if you, if you remember, we had the MLB All-Star Weekend uh -huh. Uh -huh. celebrity uh -huh. softball game there. Every one of them was like, did you watch it? And I'm like, man, I kind of glanced at it. And they're like, your game was 100 times better than their game. Because oh, they used a right. chicken wire out there. Yeah. And right. then they bring all the, fi the the bases into the infield, you know, the 60 foot instead mm -hmm. of 90 feet. And he's like, even your celebrity teams were even, I would put them even better than what the MLB had. You know, uh, you know and which man. was uh, is nice to hear that. So you know? Gary's gonna, I, I can tell you this. As soon as you leave and we go back to our offices, Gary's gonna say, "Okay, we need to get the softball team back together again." Mm -hmm. We do, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. do. It's in my blood. Mm -hmm. So I was the pitcher. Lori yeah. was the catcher. Yep. Yeah. And we used to we used to scream and yell at each other, but we had a system had, down, yeah. and yeah. it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we had it was a, a great time. Well, and again, blast. that's the reason why I created these because I was like, I, I can play in these. Yeah. Right. And after about the first game, I think my wife was like, let me tell you what, nobody wants to see Tim Corn play. <laughs> no, no offense. I know you're trying to live your, you know, young right. adult dreams out, but nobody wants to watch you play. And these are your events, and you need to take them more seriously like Jerry Jones. Right. You need to be with your kissing the babies and hugging people and be with your sponsors mm -hmm. and, like, do your thing on the field before and then let's get hit the sweets or do whatever you need to do then. But you need to Jerry Jones this thing. You don't need to – nobody cares about Tim Corn. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. So, well, yeah. I mean, I would love to watch you play. No, I mean, I'm kind of like uh, – What position were you? I, I could play all of them. All of them. Okay. That's what okay. happened. That's what happened when George was like, "You to be on the base team, you have to learn how to play everything." Every, every position. The only thing yeah. I didn't play was pitch. Okay. Um, everything okay. else, but um, I could always hit, and you know, so he's like, "You just gotta, you gotta learn how to play every position. That way, you can just get in where you fit in." Mm -hmm. right. 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 And so that's really how. And I played on some civilian teams like TPS and uh, Team Budweiser too. Okay. And uh, I mean, my last four years of the Air Force literally was seven days a week. Right. Softball. Right. Oh, that's your yeah. dream. That is my dream, dream. But of course. Yeah, that and getting paid dream. and getting take. We had TDY, and that's one reason why I got the early out because my commander, I had a commander who loved it, and then he left, and I got a commander who hated it. Right. And then so he was the one who was like, 
always on my rear end about traveling all the time. And that's when the early hours came. I was like, I'm out of here. Right. Okay. Like, okay. All right. So craziest softball story. Um, so we've had a couple. So the first OUUT game, a lot of the veterans were, were on the field getting ready. And, um, and McConaughey and his son Levi, Matthew, is introducing the guys. And I just happened to be walking by, and this one of our guys, Stetson, literally pulls his eyeball out. Right, because it's a prosthetic <laughs> right. right in front of Levi. Right. And I mean, you see some of the guys like, oh, you know, like. Right. And so I was kind of like, guys, like, let's don't traumatize Levi, right? Like, that's kind of could be traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And the thing that stood out is Matthew's like, no, 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 TK, you know, I want him to understand, you know, that's what right. these guys and girls have gone through. Mm -hmm. So let him, let him show him. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, like, again. Little dude's gonna be having nightmares because he was only like maybe nine or ten at the time. Oh my gosh! And he was our bat boy, right? right? Okay. And then um, one of the other fun things, and I think we have a video of it somewhere, is if you remember Wolf of Wall Street had come out not mm -hmm. a couple years earlier. Okay. So I was like, hey, can we let's get the chant thing going? He said, man, I don't know about that. Come on. And then Clemens was standing there. Clemens was like, yeah, let's do the chant. Let's do the chant. So we got him doing the, uh, you know, where he's right. doing that chant and. Um, which was kind of fun. And then we've had um, some of our amputees that are, you know, because when you get, you know, everybody's fun, you know, it's all fun and games until the game starts. Then the competitiveness yes, kicks uh -huh. in, guys and girls, doesn't yep, matter. Right. And, um, you know, we've had some of our window warriors that'll be just trucking a ball down in the outfield and prosthetic just pops off. Right. Right. Or um, we have one young man, Jason Coger, who's a um, TEDx speaker, and um, he was in a, uh, I don't know, you call them on the farm, one of those little uh, rangers, and hit a power line and oh, got electrocuted. Wow. And what happened is his arms, um, because he, he burned from the inside out when you get that, uh, just started filling up with whatever. So they amputate his arms. Wow. So um, the prosthetic, like one of the big prosthetic companies for all these guys and girls is right here in Irving. So they fitted him with a, an arm that has a glove on it. And then they fitted him with um, a type of deal where he can hold a bat. And wow. um, and Cody Jinx, country music singer, if you all have heard of Cody, mm -hmm. he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Cody was helping him in between innings change out his prosthetics, right? Which uh -huh. Cody thought that was really cool. Um, and then him and Cody were changing out in um, right field. So, um, I mean, and then we've had Shane Crutchen, who U.S. Marine Corps, um, UFC fighter, you know, obviously a little mentally challenged to be a UFC fighter, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Uh, just a nut job that we love. Uh, his first game, he showed up. He had a bow tie in the Marines US, USA flag civvies as his game game gear. That's what he came out <laughs> like. Where's your, like, bro, where's your uniform? Right. He's no, like, oh, that was it. I'm not it playing is. in my jersey today. I'm just doing like, See, that's walk awesome. first base down, bro. There's no telling what you'll get. Um, and then seeing people like Evan Vizarius and Trey Brandt, some of these guys, so what we do is we let them hit, mm -hmm. and then they get around, and just seeing the excitement of doing it, right? That's right. Amazing. So it's just so much fun. And then the other thing I forgot to tell you is that we will give a house away, helping the hero. Um, we'll actually oh, surprise nice. a veteran again this year, and we will okay. give a home away. Paula Dean's going to come, uh, or she's scheduled mm -hmm. to come right now and help give that home away. Okay. Uh, throw out a first pitch. So that's always inspiring too, because um, the veteran doesn't know if they're getting it. Wow. Usually that's the wife right. does, the family does. Right. Uh, the veteran usually has no clue. And when we did it at Globe Life Field with uh, our buddy Travis Strong, um, you know, to see this, he and he stepped on a mine that blew both his legs off right below his waist. Wow. And um, But he's just built like an Iron Man. He's unbelievable. But um, to see him get emotional mm -hmm. and cry, mm -hmm. yeah, where you're like, here's the tough guy, right? And, and it's really just impounded him, right? Just flattening and um it's just you know it's just and that's one of the number one things i got from most of that's when we had like i don't know fourteen thousand people at club life but they were all like by far best thing was getting that home to them absolutely okay. so it is it's, it's just, just so really hard. i mean it's just expect craziness it's always crazy right. um expect um but fun it's always fun, fun. Oh, it's fun. always a blast You're gonna have it's a good a time blast. fun until they get on the field it's a blast right. it's that's just right. crazy it's crazy fun just expect Anything and everything that you know, you never know. And then we, uh, like, I'll literally have celebrities, a-listers that will call up the day before, going, "Hey, I am going to be able to play. I'm flying in, 
So, you know, the rosters kind of will change even, you know, with the month out between now and then because people will get some gigs. Mm-hmm. People, right. uh, gigs will open up. Um, but people are mad, like, you know, there are celebrities that are mad. We have a lot of country music guys like Wade Bowen, Randy Rogers, Casey Donahue, Cody, that are fired up when they can't play because they're booked. Yeah. They're just like, right. change the date. I can't change the date. <laughs> right. Know? So, I mean, but that's how much fun that the game really is and the impact on everybody. It's, and, and it's um, the biggest part is just the impact. Yeah. The impact. And the celebrities back. and the money that's raised. Mm-hmm. And, and again, the celebrities love the veterans. The veterans love the celebs. And yeah. it's just a great combination to hang out on the field and have fun. And again, the girls that we have playing too, like they're beasts. You got Brooke Entz, who's, you know, world champion crossfitter. And um, I mean, you've got Catherine Lids- Lidstone from um, The Chosen. And you got Kristen Reed, supermodel. And you got Bonnie Jill. Laughlin, who's super model, sports oh, it, media. It's I mean, you got, some, you got some amazing is. super good. females female out there, you know, that, um, that are just as competitive. And, uh, you know, don't let one of them come up and get up in your rear end because you're right. not playing very well. Right. But it's fun to watch. All right. Very nice. All right. Oh, so okay. we do have a question. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're going to cover so it. So we do have a question, either professionally or personally. How do you, what advice would you give to our viewers and everyone on how you raise the bar? Uh, I think, you know, I was talking to a veteran yesterday that um, wanted to meet for lunch, and he was going through some things, and, you know, he actually helped me out probably about a year and a half, two years ago, because he's the kind of guy that will call and want to talk about some issues he's dealing with, but he answers his own problems as he's talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So really, I just listen. And one of the things he had told me, again, probably almost two years ago now, that he's like, you know, TK, I think maybe what I should start doing is just focusing on my day. I get to far on tomorrow, next week, a month from now, and I don't really focus on my day. And as I was listening to him, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm a lot the same way. I wake up, but I'm already dealing with tomorrow, Mm -hmm. the next day, the next day. And I told him that, bro, that's probably the most profound statement I've heard. And so what I do on my daily, you know, we all have deadlines and schedules and things. And I'll wake up every morning, and what do I got? Great. But I try to put all my focus in on that day. Right. And what I've realized is, I mean, I've just started getting more out of it and started getting more joy out of it. And the anxiety of worrying about what I got to do here, or worry about here, or worrying about this, it dissipates. It's amazing. Um, so that's what I would be the first thing is tell everybody, you know, to really focus up. The other thing that we started doing that I was telling him about is even with me and my wife is that we just pray in the morning, just me and her, which we've never done. We just recently, just kind of with over the last year, just every morning, we we'll say a quick prayer together. Um, gives us a chance to bring us together before everybody goes and gets busy. Right. And then at the end of the day, while we're laying in bed, after we turned off Ted Lasso or The Chosen, whatever we're watching, <laughs> That's um, right. you know, we'll say a quick prayer together of just gratitude of what we got today. Yeah. Right? right. And so just those two little things have really seemed, and, and every day I'll send something out to my kids, a Bible verse to them, and just reminding them how much we love them in a group text and how proud are we are we are of all of them, and um, you know, just something to kind of a little inspiration for them on a daily basis too, as a right. family, right? And um, and then the other thing is, um, you know, go be you, right? Right. Don't worry about if you don't fit in or you're, you know, people would consider you not the norm. Um, those are the type of people I like hanging with, mm-hmm. honestly. Right. And uh, you know, I've got a lot of friends that were career felon felons that are. Uh, change people now that most people probably wouldn't want to sit down and even have a cup of coffee with that are just absolutely amazing people and then um you know older people and you know i think then the last thing is just be respectful to everybody because you just don't know what anybody's going through so i always just try to be that guy to no matter who i'm meeting with or seeing or whoever like i would hope that when i when we get done meeting with each other that they will um you know, have more of a pep in their step or smile on their face from hanging out with TK right. for a little while. So that's, that's always my goal whenever we do anything. So well, this morning's been great. Yeah, appreciate it. I mean, people need to be me. thankful for their blessings, yeah. And, yeah. and it's that's the message you portray, and I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. fantastic. I've never ever promoted myself. I've never had a website for okay. you know, for TK or so it went from one athlete to you know. And, right. and when I moved down here, like I said, I didn't know anybody. Um, I met my wife down here through. Okay. The cowboy that started calling me TK. Okay, oh, wow. um, that's actually how we met, and because uh, he was dating my wife's girlfriend. Okay, and that's how her and I met. And um, so it's just word of mouth. I think you know. I, again, I'm a big energy and frequency guy, mm-hmm. and uh, I think um, 
you know, people are just always like, TK, I've got to introduce you so so, or TK, there's some people okay. got to meet, mm-hmm. or even like my buddy Mark Clayton, who's coming in here. Um, I think he's with Richmond. Um, yeah, he's coming Richmond. in today. I yeah, think. they're coming yeah. in today at yeah. noon. So, um, you know, just everybody that I know, honestly, I've been introduced by somebody, and right. again, even with right. me, with you guys mm-hmm. today, um, you know, through Rich, and you know, Rich is always like, man, let me help you with your PR, let me open up some doors, let yep. me. No, he's um, good at that. So you know. It's just been, and I was on their podcast probably two years ago. Okay. okay. You know, that yep. they invited me to come be on, like right when we were bringing our sprays out. And um, so that's the first time we I, I actually met those guys and was on the on their show. And it's just kind of, you know, again, like everything We're else turns into family. Yeah. Right. Know. Thanks to our sponsor, the Ashmore Law Firm. We specialize in probate, estate planning, family law, guardianship, personal injury, and civil litigation. You can find us at ashmorelaw.com. Or by calling us at 214-559-7202. Again, that's ashmorelaw.com. Or calling 214-559-7202.